Hi everyone. Right, let's have another go at this then. So it says here the time taken t for passengers to be checked in is inversely proportional to the square of the number of staff. So I know that t is inversely proportional to the square of the staff. There. So if I introduce my constant of proportionality, there. Right. It takes 30 minutes when there's 10 staff working. So I know that T is 30, S is 10, so that should help me find K. So 30 is K over 10 squared. Have I got that the right way around? Yeah. So 3000 is K. So t is 3,000 over s squared. I think the second years are doing tests upstairs, so maybe it's just a change over in classes, 10 to 10. Uh, so it could get a little bit noisy with people moving around. So that's my equation. So then it says b, what's the minimum number of staff working to keep you under 60 minutes? Uh, So I want the time to be less than you to be less than 60, don't I? So I want the, the 3000 over s squared to be less than or equal to 60. There. So I want that, that to be less than 60 minutes. So if I do a little rearrange, the zeros go 300 over 650. So 50 is less than or equal to s squared. Uh, I can't really mm, do much. I can't just square root it. I've got to do s squared minus 50. So that would be, mm, if I solve it, I've got a quadratic inequality here. Where I get... Uh, it's going to be a 5 root 2 and a minus 5 root 2. So I've got a graph with a 5 root 2 and a minus 5 root 2. And I'm looking where it's above the x-axis. So if I read from that bit over there, maybe I should have wrote it as s squared minus 50. Put it on equal to zero, so that's more obvious then that it's above. So I'm looking there and I'm looking there. So I want uh, s to be less than or equal to minus 5 root 2, or s to be greater than or equal to 5 root 2. Lots of s's and 5's don't look good, do they? So s belongs to the real numbers such that. There. Done for that one. Right, so I'm going to carry on though with the um, with quadratics now. So some questions there we'll do in class, and I'm, I'm going to carry on with the quadratics. Right, so quadratic model is now. It says, but I've actually lost the page where it is. There, there we go. Right, quadratic model is now. So we know it's ax squared plus bx plus c. We know the y-intercept is when x is zero. That gives us a c-value. And we know the roots are when y is 0, and we can just use poly. Right, so let's have a look at this picture here. I don't know if you can see the, the x-axis on here. So I've got y-intercepts, I've got the vertex, I've got the roots. I've got the y-intercept, the vertex, and the roots on this as well. Right. But then I've also got a look where a curve intercepts a line. Now that's a flat line, and I've got kind of two points. Let me just draw that axis on there, so you can't really tell. So I've got two points where they cross. And what I do is I just put them equal to each other, rearrange it, and then solve it, wouldn't I? That's what I do. I just put equal, rearrange, and solve. Right, so let's have an example. Let's give you a go. Call line, I've done this question before. So in the context of the situation described, identify what key points marked with crosses and the arrows. 
So a shopkeeper wants to maximise the income uh, she makes from loaves of bread. She changes the price from one day to day and records the income. So she's got this equation that P is minus C squared plus 1.6C minus 0.15 there. Right, okay. Uh, let me get our calc up. Right. So if I graph it, try and make it look the same. Oops, I didn't want to do that, did I? So I've got minus x squared plus 1.6x x minus 0.15. There. Right, so I want a picture which kind of looks like that. So that's kind of better, but it's not as good. I only want x to be 0. I don't want any negatives. Um, so let's try... Not and not. Let's see what that gives us now. There. Okay, so that's very good. But if you look, you can kind of see on the y scale, I want a maximum of one, and on the x scale, a maximum of two. So that's our the x scale, a maximum of two. Maybe going up in 0 0.5s. And the y scale a maximum of one. So let's try and get a nicer picture now. There. I mean, I could alter it a little bit more, couldn't I? Let's have that y now. Instead of being going up to one, let's have it going up to that not point six. So I'm just faffing with my axes to get a picture which looks more like that. And it kind of does. Let's just shut down the x a little bit. Let's make that 1.8. There. It kind of looks, does that look pretty much the same? That's alright, isn't it? Whew. Right then, so what information can we get? So for G solve it, let's get the roots out. So I've got 0.1 and I've got 1.5. So 0.1 and 1.5. So I know my roots that x is 0.1, x is 1.5. Oops. Okay. Um, now the maximum point here, so let's do G solve max, is 0 0.8 across, so that's 0 0.8 there, and it's 0 0.49 up, so 0 0.49 up, so kind of maximum point there is 0 0.49. And that's what it's that's the maximum profit you'll get. 49p profit, is that what it is? My word. The, and then we wait to see what it'd be like. So this has done it with 0.2, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. You can't see it, that's a 0.2. So it wants to see what it would be if I had a profit of 20 pence. So if I just press exit. And put in 0.2, so y equals 0.2, and then get where they cross. So it's going to be 0.26, so 0.26, and the other one, 1.34 maybe. There. So if we sold them, at, if we made a profit of 20p, we'd have to sell them at either 26p or £1.34. That's what it's saying. So what we're saying, so information returns, so the max income is to sell at 80p uh, and we get 49p profit. A profit of 20p, 0.20, need to sell at, and I'm massively running out of time with this. Sell at 26p, or oh, it's going to cut out, it's going to cut out 134. There. 